Good morning, and welcome back to what I like to call our Bible study time. If you're enjoying this station, tell somebody about it. Let them know that you have found a station that you really enjoy, that blesses you, that, uh, that strengthens and fortifies your convictions in the gospel, and deepens your relationship with God. I have a question that has come across my desk that I thought I should uh, uh, should endeavor to answer anyway to the best of my ability. I had a professor years ago when I was in Bible school, and he said, give them what you've got and what you don't have, don't worry about. Well, I will worry about what I don't have, but I am going to give you what I do have. The question is, what part does nudity play in the arts? And this individual lays out some of the some of the areas of art talks about film and sculpture and painting, the canvas, you know. And so what I like to do is I have worked on this. I have uh, I have uh, uh, jotted down some notes. And uh, and so I like to uh, just kind of glance at these notes and and just kind of raise uh, some thoughts in your mind. And so here's what I've said. I'm, I've said to myself, I want to say to you that as artists, we all understand beauty. And we appreciate beauty. As artists, uh, that there's a need to create. I wrote here in my note, we understand the need to create. Uh, I, I went on to say that our desire and the need to create comes from within. It's a God-given need and a God-given desire. God is a creative God. Uh, art is an expression of the nature, character, and humanity of man. It is indeed the outworkings of his creativity that is inherit, inherited in the nature of man, put there by God. Uh, there are two kinds of influences that impact uh, our art and, and always has. It, one is the external from the world we live in, and the other one is the internal. Now, I've got some more notes. I'm just going to read a piece of this. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. I've said here that humanity, hu uh, I'm sorry, that humans are, are, are a complex being made in the image of God. They are made to function in both worlds, the natural world that we live in and the spiritual world. None of us are functioning to our full capability, to our full extent, because of the impact and side effects of sin. Having said that, and I do believe this, having said that, it is important that we understand that the artists are in some ways more sensitive to the spirit world than most of us. And I think that that makes them vulnerable in a lot of ways makes them vulnerable uh, to a world of uh, uh, both uh, angelic beings who serve God as well as demonic activity, which is at war uh, with God. So my, question, my first question that I've written down here for you and I is what is art? So here's my answer. Art is the manifestation of the creative gift that God has given an individual. Art is the manifestation of the creative gift that God has given an individual. I think it's fair to say and safe to say that in some ways we are all artists, even though I realize that for me, uh, Abe Smith, I can't, I can't draw a straight line with a T-square. Uh, you know, my family is artistically inclined. They, my mom played, she sang, my grandmother did some stuff with art, my children play, my daughter sings. Um, but when it came to me, well, it just kind of jumped over, uh, over the, uh, that generation. My, my brother, uh, his love was art, he painted on the canvas. Uh, my oldest brother uh, could play the drums. Um, I'm not sure uh, what happened when it got to me, but it did hit my kids. And so it's a God-given gift. What is the manifestation of the creative gift that God has given to an individual? Kinds of art. We need to talk about the kinds of art because the question mentioned some things, but it didn't mention everything. 
And so music certainly is one of those things that we all think about when we think about art. All right. And then there's film. We realize that film is a form of art. The canvas, the painter who paints the canvas, like my brother, my late brother used to do, loved it. Got, you know, got some stuff in my office that he's done. And then there's the stage. There's, uh, you know, the, the, the actual stage. Uh, uh, Broadway, as, uh, as uh, you know, we all think about the stage. The, we, we see people's creative abilities being manifested on the stage. And then, and then there's, there's sculpture. All right, we see it in sculpture. And then, and then there's something that I think that is important, <coughs> excuse me, that I'd like to mention here, cooking. Uh, I've realized that, uh, that cooking can be, and, it, and is in many instances, especially in your better restaurants, it's an art. I mean, these guys and these girls really go at it. So, so uh, uh, art manifests itself in many uh, aspects of our life. Now, here's another question. Who was the first artist? Well, I, obviously, that, that the first artist is God. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, God created. Uh, the difference between you and I and God, <coughs> or should I say the artist and God, excuse me, is the fact we need something to create from. You know, we can't just go out and create from nothing. God created from nothing, took nothing, and made uh, the heavens and the earth. So uh, here's, here's a question for you. What's the purpose of art? Well, in, in Romans chapter 1, let me read to you. And I'm reading from you. Uh, I'm going to read to you today from the new language translation that you do, the NLT. Uh, but the purpose of art, art has, from, from my limited uh, insight, art has two uh, purposes. One is to glorify God. And the other one is to uplift man spiritually, emotionally, and, and mentally. So let me read to you chapter one, book of Romans, verse 19. And I'm going to read three verses. I, I think, I think I'm only going to read three verses here. So here's what it says. Chapter 19, the book of Romans, chapter one, I'm sorry, book of Romans, verse 19. They know the truth about God because he has made it obvious to them. For ever since the world was created, people have seen uh, the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see his, his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. So God created. But when he created, uh, he created the heavens and the earth that would reflect his character, his creativity, his godness. And so when you and I create, I don't create, but when you, the artist creates, yes, it's a manifestation of all of those things in you. But the first thing that art should do, it should glorify God. The creation, the heavens and the earth, glorifies God. David said, when I look at the stars and, and its beauty, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. He said, I say to myself, well, God, well, what is it about man that makes you so, so interested in us? And that's a sermon for another day. But, but, but David recognized the beauty of the heavens when he was out at night with his sheep and, and laying there and the sheep were quiet and resting in the comfort of his strength and knowing that he was protecting them. David would gaze up into the stars and look at its beauty, and that question came to his mind. He said, God, what is it about man that makes you so interested? And so art should glorify God. Art should also uplift man. When you and I, uh, the spectator, looks at art, uh, it, it, should, it should uplift us spiritually, emotionally, mentally. Here's a question for the artist that he has or she has to ask themselves, they have to answer this question. What's your objective in your art? What's your agenda? Is it to glorify God or is it to glorify yourself? Because I believe that in a process of glorifying God, you're going to uplift man. You're going to encourage man. But if, you're, if your desire is to glorify yourself, then somewhere in the mix, something is going to be missing. <laughs>
The question is, where does the gift come from? James says in chapter 1, verse 17, all good gifts come from God. Let me read that to you here because it's important. Verse 17, chapter 1, the book of James. Whatsoever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shadow, a shifting shadow. All good gifts, James says here. And so your, your creativity, your ability to create has come from God. In Genesis chapter 4, verses 20 through 23, there's a family there that's mentioned, Lamech. And his family did a number of things, but one of the things that God gave them, one of his sons was the ability to create. He created the, the harp and another instrument. And so the ability to create, the ability to, to, uh, to uh, uh, you know, design that creativity comes from God. It is up to you, though, how you use it, whether or not you're going to glorify God and uplift man or use it again for your own selfish purposes. The source Let's talk a little bit about the source, uh, the, the, that, that source that motivates us. Now, I'm a firm believer that, that one source is God himself, and, and I think we'll all agree with that. The, the other source is, is from within. The soul of man has the ability to create. I, I believe that the songs of old, uh, both uh, uh, gospel songs as well as natural songs, the platters, the temptations, the four tops. These were soulish songs. I grew up in that era. I grew up listening to the four tops and to Marvin Gaye and, uh, and, uh, and the temptations and the platters and the drifters. Uh, that was my era. And so I believe that these individuals, these men and women, uh, the supreme, they create it from the soulish part of, it, part of them. And, and, let's, and let's not lie to ourselves. These songs were absolutely beautiful. And they moved us. They moved us. Moved us emotionally. Yes, they did. And so, so man has the ability with himself to create outside of God. And then, and then there is that third source that, that can motivate us if we're not, and influence us if we're not careful. And that's demonic activity. I, 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 I saw this preacher one time and, and, and he was talking about how before he gave his life to God that he was, he was blowing his instrument. He played the, the saxophone and a number of other wind instruments. And he shared how that, uh, how that uh, uh, this girl began to move on the floor like a snake. And so his music, and I think he recognized this, was being... Uh, he was being motivated by some kind of demonic activity in his life. Now, we talked a little bit about music, a little bit about art. I'm sorry, in, in itself. I'm a, I'm a lover of music. I love music. I love to listen. But, but part of the question is, is nudity okay in the arts? Well, I'm going to give you an unequivocally no. Nudity is not okay in the arts. So, you know, part of what crosses my mind is uh, what's the purpose of nudity in film? What's, what's the purpose of nudity in sculpture? All right. Is nudity art? I ask myself this question. Or is nudity nudity? What's the purpose of nudity? Does nudity promote the glory of God or does it promote lust? And so I don't think that nudity has any part to play at all in the arts. I don't see any purpose for it at all. And, and you may disagree with me. That's all right. Does nudity promote the glory of God or does it promote lust? Well, I believe it promotes lust. Is a human body a beautiful thing? Yes, it is. But some things are for private viewing. 
like the body and the marriage bed. The body and the marriage bed. I want to read to you a portion of scripture here from the book of Genesis. And I think it's important. And I'm going to endeavor to explain to you, uh, to make clear to you why I have uh, this opinion. Nudity should be left to the marriage bed or the marriage room, period. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. This is Adam and Eve. And so let me read to you. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord took her out of one of his, out of the man, one of rib, and closed up the opening. And then the Lord God made a woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. Verse 23. At last the man exclaimed, This one is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. And this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are, are united in to one. Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. <coughs> Excuse me. Listen to what that just said. They both were naked but they felt no shame. Let me read to you chapter 3. Chapter 3, beginning with verse 6. And the woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she went and, and she went, uh, the wisdom, it, and she wanted, I'm sorry, the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. At that moment, their eyes were open, and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover uh, themselves. Uh, there is a, uh, a sense of guilt here, of shame that came over them uh, the moment that they fell. Let me read to you from this Cornerstone Bible Commentary. Uh, the, uh, the author here in Genesis, uh, this guy is, uh, this is Genesis and Exodus, this particular commentary. But Genesis is written by an Alan Rose. And so I'm going to read to you from this commentary, uh, page um, 49. And this is, I'm quoting Alan here. Uh, it says this, and I quote, the nakedness of the pair, chapter 2, verse 25, book of Genesis, suggests more than their physical condition. It stresses the fact that they were completely at ease with each other. There was no fear of exploitation, no potential for evil. Nakedness was a sign of their purity and integrity. Such communion was shattered by the fall and is only restored I want to slow down because I want you to get this. Such communion was shattered by the fall and is only restored in a measure in a measure in the marriage as a couple become more at ease with each other. The physical aspects of the relationship between a man and a woman can only be pure and meaningfully and meaningful when the spiritual union is there and the couple is united in serving God with their lives together. The human body is a beautiful thing because God only makes beautiful things. But the naked human body is for the marriage bed and for the marriage period. It is not for, uh, I don't think it's for sculpture, certainly not for film, if 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 uh, if it was okay, then we then the earth would just be this huge nudist colony, but it's not. We put on clothes because we recognize the uh, the privacy of our bodies. Uh, that that privacy is only shared with a husband or wife. Let me leave you with some questions. So here's one question. How does God respond to your art? Is God pleased 
with your art? What does your conscience say to you about your art? Is God pleased with that art? Or is God offended? offended? The artist is free to create, but that freedom should be guided and influenced by the moral principles in God's word. Freedom, my friend, always brings with it responsibility. You can't get away from that, and neither can I. Is the artist, are you the artist, influenced by his or her surroundings? Yes. We can't get away from that. But man's creativity in and of itself is a good thing, but that does not mean that everything that comes out of you and I is good. Are we influenced by our surroundings? Absolutely. But we should allow the Word of God to have more of an influence than our surroundings. Don't forget that man is a fallen being and therefore man needs to make sure that he or she is allowing uh, the gospel, the word of God to have free course in their lives. One's art does not have to be gospel oriented but it should be absolutely gospel influenced. Let me to say this to you. This is important. Uh, the more you understand uh, the gospel, the more you, uh, the more you dig into God's word, the deeper your understanding of his word, the greater your freedom will be to create. Listen, thank you for watching. I trust you have been blessed. Tell somebody about this YouTube station. Until next time, may God bless you and may God keep you.